A while back I saw a video where a Buddhist teacher was being interviewed, and she was saying that the purpose of the practice is to realize there's nothing to be gained beyond what you have right now, and so learn how simply to accept what is right now, and you'll be okay. The interviewer asked her, isn't that defeatist? And the teacher said, only if you think about it, which is a horrible way to live, not being able to think. And thinking, and when you do think, thinking that there's nothing better than what you've got right now. It is a defeatist way of thinking. And the Buddha was anything but defeatist. Think about it. He gave six years of his life to austerities, trying to find a way to happiness. That didn't work. He tried other things. Finally came across the path. If he had simply accepted the, thing, the way things were, he wouldn't even have left his house. He just would have stayed where he was. Accepted the fact that all of his happiness, all of his pleasures were going to have to die and somehow make himself okay with that. But he refused. As he said later, discontent was one of the secrets to his awakening. It wasn't just a general discontent. He decided it was discontent with his own actions, realizing that the problem in life, the fact that he wasn't gaining happiness, could not be blamed on things outside, had to be blamed on his own actions. But actions are things that can be changed, which is what he tried to do. Where do you start when you change your actions? You start with your mind, because it's your mind that's making the decisions. This is why when we meditate we focus on the mind in the present moment. Now, you can't focus directly on the mind as you start out, so you focus on something that's really close the breath. And you do what you can to get the mind to stay with the breath. Sometimes you need to use a meditation word. Sometimes you use counting. And John Lee has an interesting method of counting. He says you start counting the breaths 1 through 10, and then 1 through 9, and 1 through 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And by that time, the mind should be settled down. So you get to zero, no more counting. If it's not settled down, you start with ten again. The point is that you do what you can to get the mind to settle down. He also recommends making the breath as comfortable as possible. Find what rhythm of breathing feels good, in long, out long, or in long, out short, in short, out long, or in short, out short. That's just the beginning. You can also try heavy or light, fast or slow, deep or shallow. There's lots to experiment with. And the purpose of the experiment, of course, is to try to find what gets the mind to settle down. The desire for concentration is not a bad thing. We chanted just now in the factor of right effort, generating desire to give rise to what is skillful, generating desire to maintain what is skillful and have it develop. This is all part of the path. When the Buddha said that craving was the cause of suffering, many people think that he means all kinds of craving, all kinds of desire are bad. But that's not what he said. He specified three kinds of craving as causing suffering. But he also put desire to be skillful and the desire to avoid unskillful behavior in the path. There's a passage where Ananda is being questioned by a Brahmin. The Brahmin has come to see him, and Ananda is staying in a park. The Brahmin says, What is the purpose of this path you follow? And Ananda says, One of the purposes is to put an end to desire. And the Brahmin asks, How do you do that? And then the, Ananda explains with a set of teachings that are called the basis for success. There's concentration based on desire, concentration based on persistence, concentration based on intent and concentration based on your powers of analysis. 
And the Brahmin said, that's impossible. How can you use desire to get rid of desire? And then to ask him, before you came to the park, did you have desire to come to the park? Well, yes. Now that you're here, where is the desire? It's gone. In the same way, you use desire to put an end to desire, if you do it right. And that qualification, if you do it right, is important. Because actually all things that we experience are rooted in desire. The mind is a desiring thing. It has a purpose. The problem is it has many purposes. Sometimes they're cross purposes with one another. Sometimes they're aimed at the wrong thing. So the Buddha is not saying that you abandon desire. He's simply saying, learn how to direct it. That list of the basis of success, concentration based on desire, concentration based on persistence, concentration based on intent, based on your powers of analysis. Those first three kinds of concentration, based on desire, persistence, and intent, are really one. Because after all, right effort consists of desire, persistence, and intent. All of them have to be present for the concentration to happen. It's simply a matter, matter of which one is predominant. And so your desire should be based on, focused on the persistence. In other words, focused on doing things what well. All too often one of the reasons we don't get where we want in the meditation is because we focus our thoughts too much on where we want to go and not on what we have to do to get there. We can sit here thinking about how much we want the mind to be quiet, and if it's not quiet, we get frustrated. But you have to realize that wanting to get it quiet means it's not going to be quiet to begin with. So you learn how to focus on the breath even when the mind isn't quiet. There may be thoughts running around through the mind on many different levels. But you make up your mind you're going to stay with the breath regardless of those other thoughts, and you don't pay them any attention. You don't have to snuff them out. You don't have to chase them down and kill them. You just don't pay them any attention. It's like someone over in the other corner of the room talking. Well, you've got work to do in this corner of the room. If you spend all your time thinking about how you don't want them to be talking, you're never going to get your work done. You focus your attention on your work and don't pay them any mind. And you find that your work gets done. So it's a matter of learning how to focus your desires in the right place on the right actions. Focus your desire on really being intent on what you're doing, paying careful attention. When people get bored with their concentration, it's because they're not paying careful attention. Everything you need to know for awakening, everything you need to know for ultimate happiness is happening right here. How can it be boring? It's simply you don't pay careful enough attention to what you're doing that gets in the way of happiness. And then finally, there's concentration based on your powers of analysis. Even that is there in right effort, because you have to have analysis of what's skillful and what's not. And here you have to figure out, when the mind doesn't settle down, okay, what are you doing wrong? What can you change? This is how the Buddha himself gained awakening. He didn't have any guide to teach him. It was simply that he said he was maintaining his attitude of being discontent with his level of skill. So how do you become content with your level of skill? By making yourself more skillful, by observing what you're doing and seeing what you're doing wrong. And asking yourself, is there some other way of doing it? So for instance, if you're focused on the breath and the nose and you don't seem to be getting anywhere, well, change the point of your focus.
We can look at the way you perceive the breath. In other words, what image do you have in your mind when you think about breath? For most of us, the first thing we think about is the air coming in and out through the nose. But the Buddha talks about what they call wind energy in the different parts of the body. And in Thai, the word for wind and breath is the same. So they talk about breath energies in the body. You find this also in, in Sanskrit. Prana is breath, which is close to bana, which is the Pali word for it, breathing. And as I say, prana is throughout the body. So relate your in and out breath to the breath throughout the body, the sense of energy throughout the body, the flow of energy throughout the body. And try to develop a whole body awareness and ask yourself, within the context of that whole body of awareness, what kind of breathing feels good? And when the breathing feels good, can you make that breath or that sense of feeling good spread through the body? So you feel like you're being bathed in breath energy. Change the image of your relationship to the breath. You're not in one part of the body looking at the breath someplace else. You're allowing yourself to be bathed all around by breath energy. What kind of breath energy would feel good that way? So use your ingenuity. After all, this is how John Lee found this method. He was stuck off in the forest. He'd walked into a place in the forest. He was going to spend the rains retreat. Three days it took him to walk there. And soon after he got there, he had a heart attack. There was no medicine around, no doctors. And if he was going to get out of there alive, he was going to have to walk out. The food wasn't good. So what did he have? Well, he had his breath. So he figured out how to breathe in a way that would help him recover from his heart attack. It was involved breathing and working with the breath energies throughout the body. It was his ingenuity that saved his life. It helped him find a really useful way of meditating and teaching meditation. So use your ingenuity as well. Meditation is an active process, which means that you have to actively get involved in what you're doing so you can see clearly what you're doing. This is why we get the mind into concentration, so we can see our actions as they're happening. See what lies behind them, in other words, what motivates them, and see where they lead. It's in that way that we develop skill and can bring the level of our skill to a place where ultimately we can be content with it. Because as Ananda said, the point here is ultimately to get to a point where you don't have to have any desires. It's not like you're snuffing out your desires. You're taking yourself to a place where there's no need for a desire. The happiness you found is that satisfactory. But to get there, don't simply let yourself be satisfied with the way things are. Learn how to be content with things outside that you can't change, or it's, the situation is good enough to practice. But don't rest content with the level of skill you've developed. Always keep looking for ways to make it better. When you focus your desire there, then it becomes part of being skillful.